Right, greetings all. Hope this finds you well as always. And it's now back in the machine shop for the latest update on what we've been up to and where we're at. Right, first of all, my new apprentice, Mark, who we saw may his post on MPD News during the week. One of the jobs I've on, him on with is making these, machining up these bits of packing material for work on axle boxes and changing springs and whatnot. Well, when we looked at that radial drill last week, there was quite a pile of them still on there around where that white plastic box is. And as you may notice, that pile's just deteriorated, um, reduced quite seriously. Now that's because Mark's busily blasting through them, facing them off to length and to thickness. He's doing a smashing job. I mean, I'm using this job as a training exercise with him. First, also get some experience in basic lathe work, but also getting experience in cut allowances, facing material to length, different types of material and so on. And he's doing pretty well as the lad. He's getting his head down and he's cracking on with those. Lovely. I mean, that's not just the only job I've had him on. He's also been shadowing me quite a lot. And we've also been working together on various bits and pieces. And one of the things we've been working on is a bit of workshop improvement. It's various little jobs. Um, it's just really having another pair of hands in here five days a week. And one of them is this set of bench shears here, which uh, arrived here in the Silston stash and then has basically sat on the back of that bench, not doing it very much for the last couple of years. Well, on Monday, I went off to Pickering to look at some carriage axles wheel sets for Sam Cumber, and I left Mark with the job list, and when I came back, he was about halfway down the job list and still going strong. So he's dug that out, given it a quick clean up, and then bolted it down to the bench so it's good to go and ready to use. We've also made and fitted that uh, safety bolt here. It's a very high-tech apparatus, but if you just push that back, it's just a bolt that goes through the blade so that when it's not in use, there's no danger of it falling and amputating somebody's fingers. And we also put it on a bit of chain so it can't go walkies. So yeah, he's not doing too bad at all as the lad. He's doing a smashing job. And as I said, it's grand having another pair of hands in here five days a week. So on the subject of jobs that have gone out, um, we saw these bits for the crane last week. Now this, as I said, is part of the gear that extends and retracts the stabilising legs in the crane's carriage. The problem was the old shaft, which is here, broken on the end and the gear wheel was previously welded onto it. Now this cog wheel here engages in a rack in the lag and when this shaft is worked with a ratchet, that cog wheel then winds the lag out or retracts it. Now what we've had to do is first of all, the remains of the old shaft have been machined at that gear wheel that, and you can see I've also machined on a new weld prep, so that's all good to go. The shaft itself has gained a square drive at the other end of the dividing head, so that can be driven with a ratchet. And then this is a spacing collar, which has also been machined up. That just needs fitting onto the shaft and securing with a taper pin. That collar has to be removable, because once that gear wheel's welded in, it's that collar that secures it. A little interesting thing, to hold this gear wheel to machine it was quite a little challenge, because the problem was that I was holding a three-jaw chuck, I could end up with one jaw there and one jaw there in between the teeth. However, I ever tried to arrange it, I always end up with one jaw on top of a tooth. So it was running quite impressively eccentric. The other problem was I don't want to damage it. And the third problem was gripping it with sufficient force. So at this point, I produced this, a quick split bush, rattled up out of the remnants of a scrap bush. I think it's either an intermediate or trailing bush, or it was an intermediate or trailing bush of seven foot six or seven nine, but don't quote me on that. It's scrap rod brass. So what I've done is I've machined a counter bore into it. That gear wheel sits nice and snugly into that counter bore, and then there's also a split in it, so that when it's all stuffed into the chuck, it then tightens up on the gear wheel, it grips it absolutely tightly, it also grips it absolutely true. So I could hold it to do that machining work with no problem at all. Very handy trick, that. They're very useful things. You can do an awful lot of things with split bushes. Another, ha another little job that's finished is that Brian, my other regular volunteer, he's been in again last week, and he can't be in this week. I'm disappointed in him, but hey oh, such is life. Anyway, uh, he's been in this week, last week, and he finished off these bolts for Repton Super Eater header. So they're done and can now go out the door to the boiler shop. Uh, quick shout out incidentally to Tom Goulding, smashing lad Tom, he's uh, worked out precisely how to uh, find the way to the machine shop's heart by tempting us with a tub of chocolate mice, very much appreciated Tom, very nice, so he's a grand lad he is, can't do any wrong at all, um, that, anyone who gives me free chocolate, um, anyone who tries to work out how much of that tub's been eaten already in under 12 hours, um, 
Mind your own bleeding business, eh? Right, um, Brian's also been on with other jobs. He's, I'm making it, I'm also getting him to make a lot of small parts of the gauge frames, as I've shown before. And he's starting off making these, which are going to be some gauge frame fittings for the steam crane. He's already done a load for Eric, and this is just his next job. This is a bit of recycling, because I said earlier, we're using old washout plugs for this job. So what we've done is I've just grabbed that in a four jaw chuck and quickly whizzed the threads off just to make it easier for Brian to then hold in the Myford to work on. So there's one who's in progress there, one finished. There's a couple more blanks in there as well. And those bits of paper, incidentally, are just the drawings he's working off. So he's doing grand, he is doing grand. Right, uh, another job, which is at the moment a sort of cut and try stage, is what sat in the Myford. Sorry, not in the Myford. It's in the Harrison, idiot. It's a bigger machine. Anyway. What that chunk of steel is, is that's the blank from which we're making washers for setting the pressure relief valves on the Eric and Eric, the Black 5. What we're having to do here is we're to hydraulic test the pressure relief valves to check what pressure they're left at. And so what I've got is I've got two of the lads out in the running shed pressure testing them. They're telling me what pressure they're left at and then from there I'm working out what thickness of packer they need. And then I'm promptly machining a packer straight out of that billet, just parts it off to length. And then once that's done... That he then goes back out into the running shed, the lads reassemble the valve, test it again, and we're currently getting them dead right, so must be doing something right. Another quick job that's been requested is this little beautiful little thing, which is going to be a fitting for the pressure gauge which goes onto the boiler shop's test rig. It's just basically an extension because the pressure gauge they're using doesn't quite fit properly physically. The threaded connections are fine, it's just the gauge is slightly, the body of the gauge is slightly too big. So it's taken a lump of bronze, machined, put a hexagon on one end, machined a male thread onto the other end, and then that hexagon just needs drilling and tapping and an eighth inch hole drilling through the middle of it. So when it's finished, we should get something that looks roughly like that. Incidentally, if anyone looking at that drawing can hear a distant rumbling sound, do not be alarmed. The Russians aren't invading. It's not World War Three. It's just a distant ancestor of mine who was chief mechanical draftsman at Horwich Works turning in his grave when he sees that. Very sorry. Anyway, so that's just been done. Another quick aside, I've put that thread on there. And I've cheated. I've cheated. I didn't do it properly. I didn't put a tool in the lathe and use my half nuts. No, I cheated. This is another handy little trick for cutting short length threads, especially if they're of a weird pitch. And it's very handy if you're cutting metric threads on an imperial lathe. Take a die and fit it into a die stock for the thread you want to cut. Offer the die up to the work. The work's already been turned to finish size, and it's also... Um, had a chamfer put on the end. If I then support that die, it's going to be a very brief interlude because he discovers he hasn't quite enough hands to do this manoeuvre. If I support that die with the tailstock, something roughly like that, hey, but you didn't know you did just a tailstock with, with your elbow. Um, there we go. If you then trap the die between the work with the tail stock, you can then pull the work over in the chuck by simply turning the chuck by hand. At the same time, with the other hand, advance the tail stock. And so it pushes the die onto the work absolutely square. The work then winds through the die, but because you're supporting the tail stock, it stays absolutely square. Very handy little trick for cutting short lengths of thread on a lathe. I've used it quite a lot. It saves a lot of hassle in setting up, um, mainly because also this British Standard Pipe thread is actually 19 TPI, and not all lathes can cut 19 TPI without a lot of messing around with the change wheels. So, and as I said also, it's very handy for cutting metric threads on an Imperial lathe. So anyway, there we go, folks. That's where we're up to, and that's where we're at. Hope you found it educational, informative as always. Take care, and I'll see you around.